Oh, thank you, uh, Dan, and thanks, Alice. That was a great presentation. You've saved me, I reckon, a good 30 seconds. So I'm just going to use that up by, first of all, acknowledging uh, the, the working group that was involved in uh, the project we're talking about here, and specifically acknowledge the authors that you will see on this presentation in about uh, two seconds. Um, I'm also going to acknowledge the dinner speaker last night who said that uh, it's more of a code as a guideline rather than a set of rules. So there's no way I'm going to stick to six minutes. Um, Long-nosed fur seals are a population which is in recovery, as Alice was talking about, and that's led to greater interactions with commercial fishers. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about the greater interactions happening with the commercial fishery in the Coorong. Now, one of the reactions to that, uh, those larger number of interactions was the formation of a working group, a high-level working group, which included people from a range of different organisations, including DEW, SARDI, PERSA, SA Water, sorry about all the acronyms, uh, Tourism, Coorong and Lake Alexandrina Councils, as well as uh, the industry itself, the southern and southern, uh, the lakes and Coorong fishery, sorry. Now, uh, of all of that, one of the key things that the working group did was develop a series of priorities, uh, if you will, an action plan of things that we needed to do to start to uh, try and address some of the issues and understand the problems we were dealing with. Now, one of the key things that is underpinning all this is Dew's policy, which we refer to as living with wildlife. And it's all about managing interactions between humans and wildlife by first of all looking at the wildlife interactions, trying to understand the drivers, and then looking to actually ensure that the wildlife impacts take on an integrated management approach. And that's prioritising non-lethal methods before we start talking about destruction. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Now, one of the key things in terms of the actions that we undertook was to start off monitoring the number of animals that were in the, in the actual environment. Alice has talked to you a bit about the tagging work. One of the things we also did was actually count the number of seals because there's always going to be lots of statements about there's lots of seals. So let's start off by working out how many seals and how that changes through time. And this slide here, you can actually see the total abundances measured since 2015 and you can start to see a bit of a seasonal change in the number of animals that are in the Coorong. We believe that that's partly as a result of seals moving back to their areas because of the juveniles moving around and actually occupying, if you will, my phrase, no one else's, it's not technically valid, the Coorong becomes the, uh, the recruitment place for all of the juveniles to go and hang out, it's nice and sheltered, and they get to have a whale of a good time while they get to eat fish. So uh, it's almost like a Kentucky tour for uh, juvenile seals. And you'll see that there's a change in distribution in time and we're seeing those seals moving in and out. This is not a resident set of seals. They don't live there permanently. They'll occupy there for a period and they'll move back and forth between the, the areas over on KI, I think. Now, one of the other aspects of this was actually engaging and communicating. So engaging with the commercial fishery and engaging with the community and providing access to information. And a couple of the products included fact sheets, um, Q&A sheets, web information and also actually transferring the information from the working group, what we discussed, what the issues were, what we were doing about them. And these things were all made available on our website. So then we get on to the, the interesting bits, the bits you really all want to know about in the two minutes I've got left, and that's all about the management and the investigations. And the actions were focused on four key areas, one of which was fisher support, and I'll rattle off a couple of numbers because I think it's illustrative to get an idea of how much support we've been trying to provide to the commercial fishery at the same time. So throughout this period, we've been supporting, uh, as in the South Australian government, um, providing fishy, uh, financial relief to the fishers through the waiving of net fees, which has totaled about $640,000 during the period. There's been temporary changes to the fisheries management arrangements to provide more relief days for the fishers, increasing the hauling net fishing season and also the use of drum nets for licence holders. Provision of rural financial counselling and rural mental health counselling to help the fishermen deal with those issues that they're, they're subjected to. And also the investment of $260,000 for research into alternative fishing gear methods and deterrent devices, which is um, where some of the funding has come from the, the great work that SADI's been undertaking. There's also been on-ground action. You'll see some photos here of fencing, uh, fencing seals, you kind of wonder, huh? how does that work? You saw before the seals actually moving into the lakes. One of the ideas was to actually try and limit the amount of movement of seals between the Coorong and the lakes. Keeping seals out of the Coorong is probably in the impractical area of things in terms of a, a highly mobile uh, coastal environment. So we focused on looking to see if we could mitigate the number of seals moving between the Coorong and the lakes. 
Also, an understanding around seal behaviour and biology, um, community monitoring of seals and where they were at, but also, in one minute, oh yeah, okay, and also uh, whether or not they were interacting with uh, breeding of pelicans on breeding islands. And analysing 40,000 pictures over a six week breeding season showed us that seals weren't interacting with the pelicans in their breeding sites. We also got to look at seal poop. Now, one of the things about this study that was really interesting was the interaction study, which was funded by FRDC, I talked about before, and they had two key aspects, one of which was looking at alternative fishing gear, and the other one was looking at the effectiveness of seal control units, which are sometimes referred to by people as crackers, bangers, uh, explosives, uh, you name it. The euphemism is seal control units, and it's really about uh, a small device which creates a percussive uh, signal underwater and moves the seals away. It's a non-lethal deterrent, which has been used for about 20 years in Tasmania with some success. And just because we're a science conference, I thought I'd better put up some data, and you'll see up there a bit of information which shows how that uh, trial side by side gave us some indication that seals would actually be moved away from uh, fishes when they were using them, and it would actually improve uh, the would reduce the amount of damage that would occur to the, the nets that the fishermen were using while not reducing the amount of fish that they were catching. We've now made the seal control units available to fishers in the Coorong and they've actually been giving us some preliminary advice that they're seeing some benefit from that. Now just to let you know, it's not all over, there's still more work going on and there is a number of uh, ongoing steps. One of which I'll point out beyond the monitoring is some further investigations. And that's a study which is being proposed by um, SARDI through FRDC to give us some further information on the rates and the locations of those interactions, the nature of those interactions, and try and quantify the financial impact that's occurred to fishers. And just to give you some key learnings, collaboration is the key across government, government and industry. Science is really important in these spaces. If you don't have quantitative information to inform policy, well, your policy may not necessarily be that crash hot. And last but not least, that communications and community engagement. I'll just acknowledge all of the organisations that have been involved, including all the councils, and say thank you.